Scientists have found a way to reverse the effects of aging. Mankind has been looking for a remedy that would act as an elixir of youth for centuries. Creating something that could reverse the effects of aging is not so easy. But we may be witnessing a breakthrough in this matter. A team of scientists from Harvard Medical School has developed a new way to revert cells to a younger state. This research opens up new possibilities for regenerative medicine. The aging process causes not only changes in appearance. The passage of time affects every cell of the body. But older cells can be rejuvenated through the use of induced pluripotent stem cells, IPSCs, which allows scientists to reprogram the cells to a rudimentary embryo-like stage. As a result, these cells can form various tissues of the body. The above method was developed by a Japanese researcher, Nobel Prize winner, Shinya Yamanake. In 2006, he discovered that differentiated cells could be reverted to an embryonic stem-like state by inducing the expression of four genes. In other words, by introducing into an already differentiated cell four genes encoding transcription factors, proteins that regulate the expression of various genes, these cells can regress to an earlier stage. This technique is now called Yamanaka transcription factors. The work of the Harvard Medical School team builds on Yamanaka's findings. In new research, researchers have developed several cocktails that reverse the aging process. Until recently, the best we could do was to slow down the aging process. New findings suggest we can now reverse this. A similar process previously required gene therapy, limiting its widespread use, said Dr. David A. Sinclair, co-author of the study. The description and results of the research were published in the journal, Aging. Previous attempts to restore tissues to their younger state have been quite time-consuming and, above all, costly. They required the introduction of appropriate genetic modifications. This significantly limited the potential possibilities of using such technology, in which, for understandable reasons, only the richest people invested. This genetic therapy is currently awaiting human trials, expected to begin in 2024. However, a team of researchers from Harvard Medical School decided on a completely different direction of research. Their interest in this context included specific genes, the aforementioned Yamanaka factors. Studies conducted so far on mice have shown that the use of these factors in connection with, for example, a viral vector can bring specific benefits. For example, it was possible to improve the condition of their eyesight in this way, which gave hope that this method could also prove effective in the context of eliminating other adverse effects of aging. When modifying cells, 
it should be borne in mind that the process of their natural aging is aimed at limiting the accumulation of harmful mutations, which could result in a later onset of cancer. There could therefore be a risk that interfering with these natural processes could have adverse side effects. On the other hand, cell modification by IPSCs so far does not seem to increase the risk of cancer. The research team identified molecules that, when combined with the properties of the Yamanaka factors, could enhance their effects. In this way, it was possible to create six mixtures of different chemical compounds that are able to accelerate cell rejuvenation. This discovery, says Professor Sinclair, opens up completely new possibilities for scientists, because it allows you to reverse the aging process and in a much shorter time and at much lower costs. Nanotechnology allows mice to see in the infrared. An international team of scientists has developed a technology that could one day enable us to see in the dark without using night vision goggles. Researchers injected mice into the eyes of specially developed nanoparticles that convert infrared light to visible light. The supervision effect lasted for 10 weeks. It's easy to forget, but most of the light is invisible to us. What we call visible light is actually a small fraction of the electromagnetic radiation to which our retina reacts. But electromagnetic radiation is also gamma, X-ray, ultraviolet and infrared radiation. A group of researchers from the US and China have come up with a way to make it possible to see near-infrared waves invisible to humans and other mammals. This method does not require any glasses or other equipment. Researchers used special nanoparticles that, when injected into the eyes, convert infrared light into visible light. The technique was tested on mice and, according to the researchers, gave the rodents the ability to see beyond the visible light spectrum. The results of the scientists' work were published in the journal, Cell. Like humans, Mice cannot detect light with a wavelength greater than 700 nanometers. But the nanoparticles injected into the mice during the tests absorb longer wavelength light and convert it to shorter wavelengths that retinal cells can detect. Mice with nanotechnology-enhanced vision were able to see infrared light as well as visible light. A single injection gave the rodents the ability to see in the infrared for up to 10 weeks. All with minimal side effects. The researchers say the mice could see infrared light well enough even during the day to distinguish shapes. The technology developed by researchers from the University of Science and Technology of China and the University of Massachusetts Medical School could lead to the development of similar methods that can be used in humans. There are certainly more applications for such an ability, but the military comes to mind first. The army would certainly be happy with soldiers who could see in the dark.
people with such an ability would certainly come in handy when it comes to ensuring security outside the battlefield. Infrared radiation is all around us. People, animals and objects emit infrared light by emitting heat. Visible light, which can be naturally perceived by humans, occupies only a small part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Electromagnetic waves longer or shorter than visible light carry a lot of information, said Tian Zhu of the China University of Science and Technology. When light enters the eye and hits the retina, light-sensitive receptors, rods and cones, absorb photons in the visible range and send appropriate electrical signals to the brain. Because infrared wavelengths are too long to be absorbed by photoreceptors, we are unable to see them, explained Gang Han of the University of Massachusetts Medical School. In new research, Scientists have created nanoparticles that can work closely with photoreceptor cells and act as tiny infrared light transducers. When infrared light hits the retina, the nanoparticles capture the longer infrared wavelengths and emit the shorter visible light wavelengths. The nearest rod or cone absorbs the shorter wavelength and sends a normal signal to the brain. As if visible light had hit the retina. The nanoparticles have been coated with a protein that helps them bind to the photoreceptors. In our experiment, the nanoparticles absorbed infrared light with a wavelength of about 980 nanometers and converted it to light with a peak of 535 nanometers, which made the infrared light appear as green, explained Jin Bao from a Chinese university. The researchers tested the nanoparticles on mice, which, like humans, cannot naturally see infrared. The rodents that received the injections unknowingly showed certain physical symptoms that indicated that they had detected infrared light. For example, their pupils constricted. While control mice injected with buffer solution only did not respond to infrared light. But this did not satisfy the researchers. The researchers wanted to better understand how mice react to their new, expanded perspective on the world. To test whether mice can recognize infrared light. The researchers designed a series of maze tasks specifically for rodents. They were supposed to show that mice saw infrared simultaneously with visible light. The tests showed that not only could the mice see infrared light, but their perception was good enough to distinguish shapes. Mice in the water maze were supposed to find a hidden platform that was above the water, on which the rodents could stand with their feet dry. The location of the platform was illuminated in infrared. Animals after injection of nanoparticles easily found it. Researchers found no dangerous side effects from nanoparticle injections. In rare cases, side effects such as cloudy corneas occurred, but resolved in less than a week. This may have been due to the injection process itself, as mice that only received buffer solution injections had a similar frequency of side effects. 
Other tests showed no damage to the retinal structure. In our research, we have shown that both rods and cones bind nanoparticles that have been activated by near-infrared light. So we believe that this technology will also work in human eyes, not only to generate supervision, but also as therapeutic solutions for red color vision deficits in humans, soon noted.